Welcome to This Week in Sim Racing, October 14th edition. I'm Sean Cole with Darren Ganji, and This Week in Sim Racing is sponsored by iRacing.com, where you can get three months for the price of one by going to our website and clicking on any of the iRacing banners that you see there, and you can take advantage of that offer. Big week in sim racing for this, console racers, huh, Sean? This is like Christmas week to me. I mean, I don't even do Christmas anymore. This is Christmas. So October 11th was a huge day for both Xbox 360 and PS3 owners. And a little drama, <laughs> you know, kind of going on. It's kind of funny how these two companies do that. And who am I talking about? Oh, we're talking about Xbox 360 or Turn 10 and Forza 4. We're talking about Sony, Polyphony Digital, and Gran Turismo 5. And this is like round five in a 12 round heavyweight fight, isn't it? Exactly, and these guys just keep going at it. Every E3, it seems, they're looking to one-up each other. <laughs> and now, Forza 4 releases, as you probably have known, you know, you've probably you know, come to find out by now. We've, also, we've done a uh, first look, a wheel buyer's guide for it. And then on the very same day, Gran Turismo 5 releases Spec 2. <laughs> what do you know? What a coincidence. <laughs> Huge update for Gran Turismo. And uh, back to Forza 4 though, October 11th North America release date and October 14th by your time you're watching it should be released in Europe. So lots of cool stuff going on there. Check out our review or a preview. Review will be coming when we're done. You know what's cool? I suppose if I'm a Gran Turismo guy, it's nice to get some content on this day that's so big for the other guys. Yeah. But at the same time, all the fanboys come out of nowhere and you just, you have this butting of heads. And you guys got to stop that. You know what? <laughs> this is ridiculous. They're both awesome. They both have great features. You know what? The ones that are complaining about the other one don't have the other one. No. We have them both and there's great things about both of them. So, guys, if you like one of them, you don't need to talk bad about the other one. No, no, you and don't. And vice versa. You know, let us do that. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a shootout, by the way, coming up. So, we'll, who knows when we get to it. It's going to be a while because we got a lot to go through on Forza 4. And now, Spec 2, lots yes. of additions. Speaking of it, let's talk about it. Yeah, lots, lots of new features in Gran Turismo, which is nice. So, interior views. This, this is, oh God, this, this would have changed our scoring if you look back. Probably. I mean, interior views are so big, and it's like now there aren't these inferior cars is what I like to call them. Yeah, they've added uh, simplified, they're called them simplified views to a lot of the cars. I don't know if it's all the standard cars. I thought it was all. I don't know. A lot. First one <laughs> I pulled up was the Formula car, and you got a Formula steering wheel. You're in the cockpit. It makes a huge difference. So. Yeah, I mean, before that was one of those cars. You were just looking at the gauges on the on the you know if you're in that view, and it's so nice to have something that makes you feel like you're in the car. So a new uh, Spec 2 movie, uh, mid race save feature for endurance races, expanded online lounge features, photo features, a bunch of new NASCAR uh, content that they've added. Yeah, you know, support for the Logitech G25 and G27, that is huge, finally. Yes, yes. and I like the saving endurance races because that's kind of where I got stuck. That is pretty cool. So uh, also going to have DLC available soon. We're going to have that here, show you guys here on the show, so stay tuned for that. Next up, Next Cars. Up, cars, Slightly Mad Studios. We did mention this a while ago. It was the Community Assist Race Sim, and they have kind of fired things to a new level. They now have their beta out to their members. Uh, Owners, I'm not sure the right wording because again, this is a community. Shareholders? Assist. That's the best wording. So if you're a shareholder, even on the lowest level, you can now be playing what they have ready to go in the scene, which is a couple of tracks, a bunch of different cars to try out. And I haven't tried it myself yet, but I've heard some really good graphics and some great playability for coming right out of the gate. So do we need to become shareholders or are they gonna let us check it out? I think I'd like to be a shareholder in this. I have a lot be of kind of cool, huh? Yeah, and these uh, guys. What are the the, the least shares? It's like ten bucks to get in, and that gets you every update until release. So that's kind of cool. cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Different levels available from junior, senior, team member, and senior manager. And basically, each different level or donation level gets you different kind of access. The bottom one gets you in the sim. The highest one lets you kind of influence the way the sim is developed, which. Maybe we need to be at that level. I'd like to have some influence on in how it comes along. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so they're using this World of Mass Development site where you can buy the shares of the game. Exactly. You go there, you register, you purchase your package. Uh, and the current build comes with two tracks, which are Watkins Glen and Imola, and eight different cars, including the Audi R18 TDI Le Mans winner, 
Audi A4 DTM, three different historic Lotus F1 cars, two radicals, and a state-of-the-art formula car. So that's quite a bit of immediate content. They've also announced a lot of things that are coming to the game, like they've got their franchise mode, which sounds really cool, where you're actually going to progress from karting all the way up to maybe like Formula One. They've got co-op, they've got two-way pit communications going on. A lot of unique features that aren't in other sims and some dynamic weather. Modding. Modding is coming to it as well. So again, for only 10 bucks, you could be in on one of those different levels and have an influence or be playing it. I mean, it doesn't come out till November next year. So if you just can't wait 10 bucks, you'll be trying it all the way till then. Sounds pretty cool. Very cool. All right, well, that's gonna wrap up the first half of the show. Uh, stay tuned for part two, uh, where we have the Rig of the Week, sponsored by Tamiya. Yes and some iRacing World Championship coverage, and a little bit more. We'll be right back. Tamiya's extensive lineup of radio-controlled vehicles provides hobbyists with the joy of running exact replicas of their favorite car, tank, or off-road vehicle. Another attraction of these vehicles is their use of high-grade materials such as nylon resin, carbon fiber, and polycarbonate. With precise mechanical systems, the maintenance and adjustment of the various components as well as performance upgrading with optional parts allows for truly competitive racing. For more information about Tamiya, visit us at www.tamiyausa.com. Welcome back to This Week in Sim Racing, October 14th edition, and like I mentioned, Rig of the Week, sponsored by Tamiya. TamiyaUSA.com, who's pretty much got the finest models and RC cars and trucks, planes, tanks, you <laughs> name it, on the planet. So visit our friends at TamiyaUSA.com to uh, check them out. And Rig of the Week, brought to you by a guy named... Second Runner? Second Runner. That's what he goes by on our forum. Screen name, obviously. Yep, and he posted pictures and his story about his rig in the forums. Absolutely, and he's been a longtime sim racer, mostly with Gran Turismo until finally, two and a half years ago, this project began. After seeing a review on Inside Sim Racing, the Vision Racer VR3, he knew that was the rig of choice for him. The most difficult part of building a rig was designing the mounts for his 40-inch Samsung LED screens. With help from friends in the welding business and 12 hours of time, a strong frame was built to support the three screens and hold the VR3 as well. The total time in building the whole rig was about a month, and his wife even added her own touch of the fuzzy dice under the center screen. He added some LED lighting to the rig and upgraded from the G27 to the GT2 and Club Sport pedals because of their multi-platform capability. He also equipped the rig with a butt kicker, Gamer 2, and a large sound system. And so I've always said any home-built rig is never finished, and the case, same thing here. He has future plans to add a D-Box motion simulator to the rig. That thing's pretty sweet, man. Those 40-inch monitors. That's a spectacle. Thanks. Those are huge. Imagine just being surrounded by all that screen. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Next up, we have some leagues to mention, or a league to mention, or lots of leagues to mention. You know, iRacing has a ton of leagues. Mm -hmm. And you can go to iRacing.com forward slash leagues and check out all the leagues that they've got listed there. But one in particular is the 16th Street Racing League that has real life Indy drivers yeah. and was started by a guy named Brian Simpson who's been around sim racing forever. And if you're a painter, you know him very well. He goes way, way back and, and I'm a hero, Brian, for what he's allowed me to do in the paint shop. Yep, so uh, again, go to iRacing.com forward slash leagues. You can check out all of these leagues. Matter of fact, 16th Street's gonna be running a new series starting in November. Mm -hmm. so I think like Justin Wilson and yeah. a lot of those guys from the Real IndyCar series ran in that, so. Yeah, they have sign-ups. I don't know how restrictive they are of who they let in, but they've got sign-ups going for it. Pretty cool. And a lot of other leagues though, too, as well. So, I mean, league racing is a totally different world. It's something I really uh, got heavily involved in sim racing for, so. Great way to build some camaraderie and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, do some cool racing. Yeah, you get that real paddock, elbow to elbow feel, especially racing halfway against the same the guys every week. Yeah, very Speaking nice. of racing against the same guys every week, the world championship is wrapped up pretty much. Yeah, both, both ovals. Ends. Yeah. Both <laughs> ends, road and oval. 
you guys have been tuning in, I've been doing the broadcasting with Frosty St. Clair, so I know the roadside like the back of my hand. Yeah, lots of drama over there, huh? Lots of drama going on between the teams and some of the drivers, conflicts going on and qualifying. And it, it's actually a lot like the real F1 series. <laughs> you know, this isn't, you know, this isn't because I'm broadcasting or because iRacing is one of our sponsors. There is some serious racing drama going on over there and it's pretty yeah. cool. Uh, Gregor Hutu, reigning champion, and everybody knows this guy's name. You know, coming in, everybody thought he, he won 14 races in a row last season. He's the world's fastest alien. Not anymore. <laughs> Hugo Luis is now the 2011 iRacing NVIDIA Grand Prix Series champion. I am stating it for sure, officially. <laughs> we have crunched the numbers at the end of our broadcast, if you listened, at Suzuka, which was last week. There was a, we, we went in saying Hugo needed to finish second to, to win the championship. To clinch it. To clinch it, no matter where Gregor finished. And behind the scenes, Ilka Hapala works with PSR TV, and he assured Frosty and I going in, he finishes second, doesn't matter where Gregor finishes, after drops, Hugo is the champion. And that's the confusing part, the drops. So where do the drops play in? Which race gets dropped? And just quickly, here's the bottom line. Right now, Hugo Luis has 628 points. The max that Gregor can score after this race, even if he wins, is 627 points. Okay. So no matter what happens, Hugo does not need to show up this week and he will score you know, zero points. That'll become a drop, but he will get 18 points from one of his other lower. It's, it's so confusing. A but lot the of people line, thought he had to start the race. He does not need to start the race. Hugo Luis is the champion. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Hugo, look at this picture of him we got from In Racing News. This guy's kid. Yeah. I mean, this guy's, you know what? Actually, us, Sean and Darren here at Inside Sim Racing, now dub V, Alien <laughs> Hugo Luis. You are. You are officially an alien, man. You beat the king alien, Gregor Hutu. Congratulations, Hugo. Great job to you and your teammates, My3ID. I was just gonna say, he had the whole team effort behind him as well. Congrats to Gregor for winning that last race. There's still one more race to go, Silverstone, next Saturday. Uh, tune in PSR TV, and there's still a, a possibility for second place between Gregor and Klaus Kivikas, who led the way most of the season. Fourth is too far back, fifth is too far back. And another thing I wanna mention about this series, the top five all won races this year. That's pretty good. That is way That's cool. That's exciting. It is exciting. That, that just, it mixes it up and, you know, at any point, I thought Klaus Kivikas was gonna be the champion. I yeah. thought Jesse Neiman had had a chance at the championship. I thought Gregor was gonna come back and win it. I thought he was untouchable. Hugo Luis, Four wins straight coming in to Suzuka. He had won four in a row, so he was looking to make it five in a row, finish second place, won the championship. Wow. So great job. Oval Brazil. side. Oval side, not quite as much drama in terms of winning the championship, but you don't go to oval racing without drama. Two races ago at Phoenix, you had what has turned into sort of a, a problem. Uh, a lot of drivers getting some ruffled feathers, a lot of wrecks, a lot of people pointing fingers. And it I looks, heard there were some suspensions. Yeah, well, it looks like it feels like NASCAR, which is awesome. what it is. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. That's why we watch oval racing. Yep, and I love, you know, there's some, you know, quarrels going on behind the scenes. But you know what? Rubbin's racing. That's NASCAR style racing. Yeah. They're racing so close, there's gonna be stuff like that happening. And this leads to friction between drivers and, gosh, people who aren't even in the series just kind of caught up in it. Uh, like maybe even you and Ray Alfala, huh? Yeah, Ray and I had a little uh, headbutting going on earlier in the season, totally unrelated to the series, but everything's cool between Ray and I now. And you know what? Congratulations, Ray. You did an awesome job. Man, you pretty much led the way the whole season. He was dominant. In fact, I picked him to win the first race of the season, so. And he's sitting like 14th or so in the points on the roadside. And the Intel GP, he went and did that as well. So this guy's like all over in sim racing. So besides Ray Alfala, let's talk about the top five. Yeah, you got John Gorlinski. He won two races and he came in second in the points and he was only followed by 11 points by Thomas Hazard, who was pretty dominant this season as well. He led the points at one point and also won a race. And speaking of winning races, we mentioned it on the roadside, all top five guys in the NASCAR series won races and a handful of guys outside the top five. So talk yeah. about drama, drama all season long, yeah. great racing. You know, again, Rubbin's racing guys out there, 
Season's over. Cool down. <laughs> Watch Ray get his ring at Homestead coming up here and the, you know, and the real deal. And, and the big check. Yep. And uh, moving forward to the next season, Kevin King won a race. Yeah. You know, he's been around sim racing for a yeah. long time. Look for him next season. He's going to be a force. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, this all sets it up for next season in both series. You've got great rivalries. You've got great competitors. And once everybody cools down, I think we can start off where we left off this year with a lot of intensity and great racing. And I think unless something major happens in that last race, that's probably going to wrap up our coverage of the 2011 World Championship Series, both on the yeah. road and the oval. So that's going to uh, wrap up this week in sim racing. Make sure to check out all our current stuff. F1 2011 either is going to be up by the time you see this or very soon after. Got it in our editor's hands. Already been filmed. Uh, everything's done. We're just waiting for it to be finished. So Couple finishing touches. That's going to be coming soon. Uh, lots of other stuff. We've got three rigs to review. We've got the R seat, we've got the game pod, and we've got, finally, <laughs> you've seen them on the show for a long time. We finally got a, a, a review version. And the sim seat, the new right. sim seat, which we reviewed an older version in the past. We got a new version of that. A lot of requests for all three of these rigs. All right, well, we'll see you uh, next time or whenever our next show is. I'm Darren Ganji. Sean Cole. We're out of here.